we're back for another one of these on one of our channels. I'm not even sure where we are anymore. Yeah, I'm lost. It's all over the place. But <laughs> um, we're on Netflix. Yeah, hey, we've been syndicated. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk money. I'll give credit where credit is due. Miguel is not afraid to talk dollars. You know what's funny is like people that are good with money, they got that way by talking about money. Yeah, I think a lot of times, like if your dad was a typer, like, hey dad, how much money do you make? And they're like, don't ask that, that's rude. Like that's an American culture thing, but I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a good thing yeah. when it comes to making money. There's this feeling sometimes that you need to be able to pay to play kind of deal. Well, and define that, pay to play. So that, that what happens, specifically do you mean? So there's there's a couple of different things that I've seen. Is either um, you spend a lot of money with somebody. We'll use okay. we'll use Brian and you as an example here. So Brian obviously is buying. Yeah. Is it me buying tattoos or Brian <laughs> buying super? Delicious? Either way, but okay. So you know, from the outside. All I see is Brian comes and spends fifty thousand dollars with you on Superdorf projects. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, I wish. And, <laughs> and goes and goes and buys a full suite of racks from Freedom Breeder in the whole nine yards. And then when you go to Indo next year to go chase wild retakes, you call Brian and say, "Hey, you want to come along?" Gotcha. And we sit back and say, "Well, I mean, okay, Garrett didn't know Brian from anybody yesterday, but since he just spent a shitload of money with him, now he's buddy buddy with him." A lot of times. It feels like for those of us that either can't choose not to or, or otherwise throw big money at stuff like that, kind of just get brushed aside. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, I, I mean, I'm not going to answer your message on Instagram because, you know, you've never bought anything from me kind of feel. Okay. There's that side of it. The other side of the coin is those guys that throw lots of money at projects and more power to them. I'm not downplaying. If I could, I would, believe me. We'll use the Batman since it's like the hot thing right now, it seems like, in ball pythons. Dude, you, that was so four months ago. This probably, is why you're not successful. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you could, you know, you go out and you buy $10,000 worth of visual clown combo females. Okay. And then you go spend $7,000 with, say, Justin Kabilka for a Batman male. Okay. And then you put them together. And you, is that how much they cost? They did. I don't know if they, I don't know what they are today. They, I don't they were seven grand last year. Yeah, I mean they're cool, but and so, you, and then you put them together and you produce ten Batman's in your first season or whatever. Yeah, that doesn't it doesn't feel genuine. I guess is the best way to look at it. Anybody could go spend a crap load of money, buy the pieces of the project, put them together, make more of that project, as yeah. opposed to people say like, let's say Brian wants to get into the Superdorf. Um, combos you know and, and, right. and traits or whatever and he wants to make a you know whatever a, a golden a snow golden child super dwarf that he fell in love with but he doesn't have the 25 grand or whatever to buy one so he goes and buys a combo pos double head uh female and then a year later buys another male that's uh you know say annery possible head albino or what have you mm -hmm. and starts putting together and swings for those insanely long odds and hits on it. It feels like it's more. It would definitely be an anery, by the way. There you go. <laughs> He's got good taste. Got him one over. But it feels like it's more. There's more value in it being earned as opposed to being bought. And by that's, buying a cheap animal to make, to make an expensive animal rather than an expensive animal to replicate it rapidly. Correct. Yeah. And I feel like the problem that lies within that is like. So if I wanted to make a make Batman, I could. I have everything in my racks to do it. Yep. It's just a. A slow buildup. Absolutely. And when people were, you know, coming in and dropping these insane amounts of money, like he said, that's cool. Whatever. By the time you know, little man can do it, the prices are already like way dropped. And it's not for me. It's not necessarily about money. It's nice to make money. I want to make money so that I can expand my collection, you know, and someday get the Freedom Reader racks. But by the time I can make it, the you know, the price is all the way down. I spent all this time doing it, you know. So I guess the first question would be, are you trying, do you want to make money or do you want to make Batmans? Well, I want to make both. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you, you want, you want everything. First of all, he had the vision, which, yeah. which that is a difficult thing to do. Um, that, that takes creativity and everybody that's trying to make a Batman that even calls it a Batman mm -hmm. is borrowing his name and trying to make a snake that he made. Yeah. Um, and you have to realize that you're talking about a slow buildup from single genes. That's exactly what Justin did. 
And so at the end of that, if he's going to sell an animal for $7,000 that took him 10 years to make, based on a vision that he had a decade ago, which may, may not be a decade with ball python in my world, Snow Golden Child is definitely at least a decade. Now, you, if you want to make that snake just because you love that snake, even though you're not the first one to make it, but you right. think it's awesome, and you want to not pay in, and you want to go through that slow process, as long as your goal was to make that snake and you finally make it, I think it will be very rewarding for you knowing right. that you set out to do something. So if that is your goal, you will get that reward. I, I if feel like the goal is money, then I don't think there's any problem with saying, wow, Justin, great job, dude. You took 10 years and a lot of stuff to do that. Let me buy that animal that took you 10 years to make, stand on your shoulders and make them all eight months from now when he's old enough and just pump them out. And that's what I and feel And I'm like gonna make a, a significant investment so that I can have a rapid and significant return on money. Yeah, I agree with all that. And I think the problem that I have mostly with that is not is not just in making the clowns and selling them for ridiculous amounts of money. It's people buying them and then cranking out, you know, however many in a year, which creates a higher number of them which lowers the demand for them and that lowers the price i don't i don't necessarily agree with people making them and then undercutting justin you know what i'm saying gotcha so here's the thing about it and that's whether you're trying to make He's whether you're trying to make one batman and it takes you everything you've got to go there and make it so that you can sell it or whether somebody else is going to make a hundred batmans and it doesn't take them very much because they're annoyingly rich and they can just dump money on it and make it rain Batmans. You know what I mean? Both of you are watering down the market. You just have less of an impact than the rich person does. Right. So here's the thought. Okay, if you are getting into a new project and you want to be the creative guy with the vision that can follow it through, that's the guy that's going to climb to the top and he's going to make the money. If that's what you're going to do, you need to take inspiration from the past and you need to have foresight from the future. Remember what it was that got you in that you thought was so cool, and then think about what would be the dream thing that you could do to build off that base. I think you're gonna be successful in your projects. Right. Versus looking to your contemporaries and say, what do you got going on, what do you got going on? Hey, you know what, I'm gonna do that too. I'm gonna make my branding like you, I'm gonna make my snakes like you, I'm gonna make my everything like you. What you're doing is taking somebody's fine aged wine that developed and became beautiful and adding water to it right to try to make more you just made it worse but i also on the other side to be totally fair i've never spent a dime with you thanks yet well, <laughs> thank, thank, thank you state of montana um but you yeah, spent more money on us yeah. Mine was <laughs> <much better. laughs> but you still i mean you still invite us out you have us here you, you know what so there is the other side, obviously, where you don't have to buy your friendships into these groups, you know. Right. But it, there is a part of it that seems that way. Well, I think there's two things happening. The first one is people are doing business. I would would sell them project, you know, products or services or whatever it was, convince them to buy. And uh, you know, basically, what you want them to do is think about you, remember you, so you try to do something memorable with them. So, so that's not a real friendship. It's a business friendship. It's a business relationship. And there's nothing, I don't think there's anything wrong with being friendly in business. So that's one side of it. So I don't think it's disingenuous. Now, on one hand, if you're trying to buy your friends and you feel like they're being disingenuous to you, that's not their problem. That's your problem. Why are you trying to buy friends? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, maybe you ought to realize the value that you have as a real person and just quit trying to be someone else and just be who you are and find the people that naturally like you. I'm not supposed to <laughs> spend all of my money with you to get you to like me? That's not... No, and obviously you're not anyway, so I'm not afraid <laughs> to tell you that. Well, and you don't like me, so it's like, <laughs> so we're yeah. even. Right, okay. yeah. But it, it's a calculated marketing move where they're going to spend a $5,000 having a fun vacation with somebody who just gave them $100,000. Like I have certain customers that have, you know, invested heavily with me over the years and I know everything about them because I know the time when they couldn't pay me because, you know, there was a hospitalization in the family and, they, and the, that payment was late or how, um, 
you know, they, they got a, an extra snake in the box when they got married as a wedding present. So you, you begin to know these people intimately as they come back and as when like for me, a sale, maybe it doesn't look like this for everyone, I don't know. But when I am selling a snake to somebody, I'm trying to find the right fit for that person and that animal. So I actually do need to know a little bit about you as a customer so that I can try to help you. And I don't do that for the money because I could just try to sell you the most expensive snake I have or figure out what your budget is and max it out, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, I do that for my animals. I mean, it takes a lot to produce a snake. You've had snakes now. Yep. They're, it's like amazing seeing those little noses poking out of the eggs. You're so proud. You love those snakes and you want them to have a good life. Yeah. And so I try to find homes that are a good fit for my, my snakes where they're, you know, where they're going to have a long term and valuable purpose to the customer because it means the snake has that much better chance of having a good life. And so when you do that, you really do get to know these people and you do form friendships. So I have friendships with people that are worthless and bring me no money, like you. And uh, then I have friendships with people that, you know... That was a random shot. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, you know, and then I form fr uh, genuine friendships with people that have given you me a lot You actually like. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's other people that, you know, I don't like and they come to me and they're like, well, I want this snake. And I'm like, well, here you go. You know, cost <laughs> this much. And, and then you're done and you walk away. You know what I mean? So it's, it, there's... There's all kinds of different situations. I would say that probably the bigger frustration is that you are aiming for something in the industry that you haven't realized yet. And when you see someone else realizing it, that you feel less deserve, like is less deserving of it than you, or doesn't make sense why they're getting it and not you. There's just a tinge of self-pity or jealousy or something like that oh, if, i mean if we're being honest no i'm sure jealousy is a big part of it and and that's kind of that's why i've seen a lot of the pay-to-play thing to come in is um they you know they have been able to buy their way to that position for instance right. and a lot of people can't you know and that right. and i know that that causes issues sometimes so that was and just... I've, i being in the industry uh, for a very long time and, uh, and for a lot of it i've been overlooked or outshined by somebody else or whatever the case may be that has like you know in any reptile circle there's like the star power celebrity guys and then the little whatever guys and and um i'll say over the years there's been certain people that are like well you know i don't care about garrett because he's whatever he's over there doing the super dwarf thing and he's not a you know, big ball python breeder he's not playing the game he's not doing that you know, and I've I've been like looked over or outshined and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you know, I work with these animals not so that I can make friends with people who started getting into reptiles because they don't get along with people anyways, right? I I work with the animals because I don't get along with people anyways, and I love the animals. And so, you know, at the end of the day, like That's I think if you keep your nose down, and you and you you bust your ass, do you your, know? Yeah, do your thing. And, not try and, to do somebody else's and you thing. go make your own Batman or whatever the pay, the case may be. Um, you know, the yeah. people who appreciate you for who you are and what you're doing will will bring you that kind of sense of accomplishment, and you'll you'll get people rallying around you that cheer you on. Yeah, you're great. I, I love what you're doing for the industry. What a great job. You know, so cool to have people like you around, and and that stuff feels really good and drives you on. Yeah. Sometimes the people that make you feel the best are like the random mom and daughter who come up and say, hey, you know, that one thing that you said and you brought your kid in there or whatever and you showed us, like, I showed that to my daughter and it changed her whole perspective and her life at school is better. And it's like, how do you top that kind of thing? You know what I mean? You're actually having a real legacy and a lasting difference. You might not even get to see it. I don't think we get to see that stuff. But I'll say you're going to have a bigger impact on people just by being you and offering what you uniquely have as a person to the industry in a in a real down to earth and somewhat vulnerable way sometimes, then then you can offer by exchanging money that doesn't mean anything. You know? So I would just encourage you to, to keep doing that. Look at your animals, look to the past, look to the future, you know, find that, that creative source and spark that keeps you going and focus on that. 
And you know what I mean? Like we're we're reptile guys. We don't get along with people. We don't like warm fuzzy pets. We like the stuff that hates us. So why not uh, realize that some people are like the snakes too? They hate us, but we can love them anyways. And it's great. It's a good life, you know. But it's all about perspective. Fair enough. So you guys want to go to Cancun? Yeah. So <laughs> that's what I heard is that you're not inviting me. Heck no. Not inviting me on a trip. Not with these guys. <laughs>